Disney doing to modernize and globalize their, their field? Well, being a world leader for entertainment and continuing to grow in the entertainment business, we offer a variety of different entertainment venues in different areas, including in the sports world as well, with ESPN being one of our brands. In the year 2035, there will be an increase in spending on sports and facilities and stadiums, with an increased focus on technology. One can predict access to internet will be extremely accessible and reliable. New stadiums such as the Atlanta Falcons Mercedes-Benz Stadium offer free public Wi-Fi to the stadium. The stadium also uses solar power in their glass panels, creating a more energy efficient facility. With the high internet usage across the United States and developed nations around the world, the demand for internet usage is only going to grow. In today's age, streaming of videos is so common, and streaming for all video content is common as well. As ESPN offers the Watch ESPN app, where you can watch college football games and other sporting events on computers, tablets, and cell phones, wherever you can have internet access. We recently announced that we were pulling all content from Netflix. The belief was we will be successfully having our own video streaming service that is part of the Disney brand. Big players such as Amazon offer Amazon Prime, a streaming video service that plays NFL games, Thursday night games, and games in London. Hulu and PlayStation also have streaming service as well for video content and sports. We believe we can offer an even better streaming service than these other competitors. On Disney property, we also offer the ESPN Wild World Sports Complex, where we offer a variety of different sports and activities. In the future, we will offer even more facilities that will be more energy efficient, run on solar and wind power. These facilities will also offer top-notch technology on facility property, including great internet access and more virtual experience. And also, we will enhance the medical procedures from athletic training staff and exercise physiologists. Virtual reality headsets are also being used in venues, and they look more like future holograms. It gives a person more personal experience and makes them feel like they're actually at the game. All right, Mark, where do you think sports will be in the year 2035? Well, I think that's a loaded question. Um, let's look at it from a more financial uh, perspective because obviously I do have a lot of money owning various teams. Uh, I think sports and financial backing will continue to grow. And just looking at you know prices of NFL games and sponsorships from them, uh, tickets have increased due to inflation you know, a lot in the, in the past 10 years even. Uh, Super Bowl commercials are obviously outrageously priced. And... Um, you know, these big corporations are the ones that are backing these uh, events and leagues. So, these broadcasting networks, be it Disney, ABC, uh, ESPN, all owned by Disney, they, uh, they're the ones that are going to be selling the airtime to these companies and basically promoting their, their product for a lump sum of money. So do you think sports will become a more globalized trend, and how, how will large corporations plan to this? Uh, as far as globalization of sport, we can already see it with uh, basketball in the Asian markets, uh, especially with a certain West Coast University, recent news. Uh, large corporations are always going to be looking to increase their profits, and increasing their market size is the easiest way to increase their profits. But who am I to know that? I'm not an entrepreneur or anything. Um, but you know, in 20 years, larger companies are only going to spread out further and increase their, their profits and their sales. And that's obviously their end goal, is to make more money. Uh, there's even a chance of this happening. Companies are going to take that risk and uh, jump right on board. Are there any potential negatives to this forecasting? You know, with increased uh, commercialism in sport, there's obviously issues that arise. Uh, you know, sometimes you take away from what the sport is actually supposed to do. Uh, just taking it into, you know, United States amateur sports, you know, collegiate setting. 
the main purpose of people going to school is for an education. Uh, I think our society has gotten away from that a little bit, and you know they're more focused on the pursuit of professional sports and the paycheck that comes along with that, and the schools getting their endorsement checks from you know Powerade, Gatorade, and all these other big major corporations. Corporations, sorry. And uh, you know they're getting away from the true nature of sport and where it needs to be, and you know it's a social construct to. You know, aid uh, citizens and people to enjoy themselves on, on leisure activities and get an education in a collegiate setting. And that's fallen by the wayside, and now money drives everything. And um, you know, it's it's a shame, but it's only going to get worse in the next you know 15, 20 years. How will organizations combat the increase of technology, i.e., self-driving cars, therefore a lack of parking lots, with tailgate? Uh, these te technology advancements have not only come to my attention, but to other owners across the league as well. Um, we've come together to think of ways to try to include the fans more, um, giving them a better atmosphere of tailgating um, so they can have more fun and still enjoy the game, even if they don't have the financial resources to still attend these games as the financial aspect and the prices will only go up from here. To, I'm talking about maybe building 250,000 plus uh, stadiums where they can fit that many fans. Uh, not everyone would be able to have a seat, obviously, but it would still give them an opportunity to still enjoy the games before and after, and maybe have like areas for them to still watch the games, and uh, especially with not having parking lots with these technologies advancements like the driving cars. Obviously, uh, virtual reality has also been rising um, especially in sports. So at these venues, there may even be stations for families um, to even put on a headset and watch the game from one of their favorite players. Um, these advances will not, will not happen until the time comes, but we are definitely aware that we must be able to conform and adjust to these new times. Uh, Jerry, there's been word that you've had a contract with Uber starting up. Um, where do you see uh, how do you see your organizations reaching a large, larger fan base with Uber? Well, as you already know, they, Uber already has a self-driving uh, cars in the city of Pittsburgh, for example. Um, we believe that this will help families and fans of teams be able to come to the games more safely. Um, also, we wanted to keep this a secret, but we're also in the midst of creating a whole new form of uh, travel. Uh, we're calling it Super Train. Um, it's going to be nationwide, all underground. Um, the train's going to be able to reach 500 miles Per hour, um, so this will allow fans from hours away to be able to make it to game day um, in a reasonable time. For uh, and it will also increase the demand for tickets. So with these larger stadiums that I talked about being built, it will have it will be a major contribution to getting fans into the stadiums. Welcome everyone. We are the great consultant group of Erie. Uh, we're here today to discuss our interviews with Jerry Jones, Bob Iger. And Mark Cuban, and where their opinions were of where sports will be in the year of 2035. First to discuss the interview with Bob Iger is Nick. So Mr. Iger talked a lot about technology, and this includes video streaming service, high tech in stadiums, and virtual reality headsets. First with the stadiums, he talked about having easy accessible Wi-Fi and reliable Wi-Fi in stadiums will be increased in stadiums in the year 2035 and all facilities. And streaming services will be offered by Disney at a lower cost than Netflix, Hulu, PlayStation, and Amazon Prime, as well as other competitors. And with virtual reality headsets, one can feel like they're actually on the playing field without actually being there. And in the future, we can predict that there will be like more hologramic pictures as well for televisions and games. I'm Keegan. I'm talking about the discussion I had with Mark Cuban. And the idea that he had was prices are just going to continue to skyrocket over the next 20 years or so. And that sports will continue to spread due to the commercialism and globalization of sport and the nature that our society has brought it to. Uh, it's also important that he said to keep in mind the, uh, the true nature of sport and what the purpose of sport is in the amateur level and the professional level uh, as it relates.
affect the community and general population. So lastly, I talked with Jerry Jones and he was talking about the fan experience. Obviously, everyone already knows about Jerry's world. Um, one kind of surprising thing he said in his interview is that stadiums will only not only get bigger, um, but they'll also increase their fan experience for, for each game. Um, he also talked about how the new advancements in technology of transportation will only um, take away just parking lots. So he also talked about how these new stadiums will also include areas for fans who don't have the money resources to actually go to the games, but still enjoy tailgating. He also talked about partnering with Uber. Um, one thing that he talked about is their new transportation system, um, the super train that they're going to invent. It will be nationwide, which will allow fans from all over the country to be able to root on their favorite team, no matter how far away they are. Um, another thing they didn't really talk about in the interview, but that there will also there might be new third-party venues for where there's, it's kind of like family-friendly bars for um, families to be able to enjoy the games um, and even use the virtual reality headsets like Nick touched on where they can kind of watch the game live from some of their favorite um, players in, the, in, the, in different leagues. Thank you everybody for your time. That concludes our uh, consultation of where we see sports in the year of 2035. Hopefully our research can help you guys in your research uh, in the future and see where globalization and commercialization of sport will take the sport industry in general.